I heard your phone go off. <laughs> Good morning, Periscope. Happy Friday. We made it. Good morning, Trinette Wine. Good morning, Tanika. Good morning, Chica RN. Uh, Genuine Me Forever. Alicia Danielle One. Hey, Nikki. Neat, stylish, no need for fronting. Real Natural Beauty, Sally 05. Love God 119. Uh, <laughs> trying to keep up. Hi from London. Good morning. Hey, hey. Good morning. Worship is key. Stepping into purpose. Life happens to all. Elder Miller. Good morning. God's girl. Thank you for inviting followers. Good morning from Memphis. Lofton 75. Uh, hey, Ambassador Apostle Lance. Good morning, man of God from Denver, Colorado. Morning, Deborah from Cali from Memphis. Thank you, Lofton, Tanika, and Worship is Key for inviting followers. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing? If you are excited that it is Friday and that the end of a thing is better than the beginning of a thing, go ahead and give me a hands up in the comments. This is my hands up because I'm excited that it's Friday. I'm so excited that it's Friday that I could sing you guys a song. However, I don't think you want me to sing you a song because I, I can't sing very well. <laughs> yes, I see those hands up. Everybody is excited that it is Friday. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sing. No, I'm, I promise you don't want me to sing. I wish I could sing. I always ask God to... Uh, I fasted one time and asked God to give me a voice. I really believed he was going to because it's my dream to be a worship leader, but... <laughs> I can't sing. God said stick to preaching because I can't sing. But I still I still sing and worship unto the angels and they love my voice. But to human ears, it's, just, it's not good. So I'll spare y'all from my singing. Good morning, good morning. Okay, well, happy Friday. I hope everybody uh, is having an awesome week thus far. If these scopes have not been blessing anyone else, I am fine with that because they've been blessing me. So if you don't want to listen, I'll go ahead and preach to myself this morning because I am in the middle of a process and all this teaching on process has been setting me free. So, <laughs> you guys are awesome. I love you all. Hashtag scope family. You guys make my day. You guys think that I get on here to bless you, but I get on here because you all bless me. It is an honor. I love it. I feel most alive when I'm teaching and preaching on the Word of God, so thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for having open hearts for me to throw the seed of God unto, so you guys think I'm on here to bless you, but really you all bless me, and it is an honor to serve you all. Um, so this week we've been talking about the process, and <laughs> uh, raise your hand if you're in a process right now, and if everybody's hand is not raised, you're lying, because we're all in the middle of a process. So we are all in a process, so we've been talking about uh, the purpose of the process, because if you can identify the purpose in anything, it'll help you submit to it. We talked about the products of a process, so what a process creates within us, why God puts us through a process. Um, you know, we've talked about um, other things, you know, why God processes us. We've just been talking about the process all week long. So we're all in the process, but when you're in the midst of a process, I know one of my number one questions is, okay, God, so how do I get to this next season? Because I see that you're processing me, and when you're in the midst of a process, we talked about how a process is a sign of God's investment in you and God's investment in your future. So ultimately, the point of a process is to get to the promise, because at the end of every process is a promise or a product so you know throughout talking about a process yes deliverance is part of a process if you're being processed what that means is God is delivering you or further killing your flesh removing anything that is not like him removing anything that is not like the Spirit of God so that you can be a better vessel to fulfill what it is that he's called you to do but one of the keys um, to getting to through your process I wanted to know okay God so I'm going through a process but what is it you know what are you looking for out of me in the midst of this process what do you want from me in this process so that I can move on to the next season and something that I have truly been learning over the past two years of my life and specifically in this season is the key to your next season so go ahead if you guys want invite your followers and share the broadcast because I'm about to drop the bomb of what the key to your next season is and it's true for every single person I'm gonna give you scripture on it I'm gonna give you examples on it even Jesus 
himself had to find this key in order to get through the process and get to his next season. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for inviting followers. Everyone, come on in. Come on in. I'm going to give you the secret, the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> All right. So if you are going through the process and you're like, okay, I'm in the midst of a process, how, what is the key to my next season moving forward in this process and making sure that I'm successful in this process? So this probably isn't going to be what you wanted to hear, but it is the truth. The key to your next season is serving. If you want to make it through this process, if you want to enter into your next season, if you want to see the fullness of what God has for you, the fulfillment of his promises, you have got to serve. If you feel stuck, if you feel stagnated, if you feel like you've not been making progress, like you've not been moving forward, like God hasn't given you what it is that he told you he would give you in this season, my question for you is, is what does your servant life look like? I believe that it is, God, is one of God's greatest goals within us to create within us all a servant's heart, to create within us all, because that is the heart of God is ultimately to serve and to give. So my question for you is if you feel stuck, if you feel like your process isn't moving forward, if you feel like you're not seeing the fulfillment of what God told you he would give you in your next season, what does your servant life look like? Here's what I have to say, and I believe it with my whole heart, and I'm going to give you scripture to back it up, because at the end of the day, my, my words will fall to the ground, but the words of God never will. So this is what I truly believe believe if you're not serving there's no way you're growing and there's no way you're going because you're not good God's never going to advance someone never going to grow someone and never going to entrust someone with more if they haven't first cultivated and established a servant's heart part of your process and the reason part of the reason that God is processing you is to get you to learn how to serve because what serving reveals is it reveals your character, it reveals your ability to humble yourself, it reveals your ability to submit yourself unto God, and it reveals your true motives. What serving is, is serving is the ultimate killing of the flesh in telling God that you will exalt his will above your will and you will exalt his desires and his kingdom and his agenda over yours even when it hurts and even when it isn't convenient. You know a lot of people, uh, so I am uh, the children's pastor at my church and I think that working with children is probably one of the ways that you can most ultimately serve because they are the least of these. And when I try to contact Constantly find volunteers to help me for children's church people love to say that they don't have time it's not a part of their calling <laughs> or they don't have the grace or the anointing for that they don't have time or they're too busy but my question is if you're too busy to serve then what are you really doing and my question is you know the Bible tells us in Titus that it is the job of all men and all women to raise up the younger men and women so I'm sorry but every single person is called to cultivate children to cultivate the next generation so what we have to understand is if you're too busy for serving what are you really doing and if you're too busy to serve then you are surely too busy for God to give you a platform for God to give you more money or for God to give you more time if you want God to give you more time extend your platform give you more money extend your business or your ministry you need to learn to serve because if you can't serve he doesn't need to if you're too busy to serve and you don't have time to serve then you are too busy to get anything else so just go if you're not gonna serve just realize you're gonna stay in the same place you are right now for the rest of your life but if you are willing to serve if you are willing to make yourself the least of these that's when you're gonna see breakthrough that's when you're going to see the process continue and that's when you're going to see God to begin to be able to where you are in a position to trust you with more the thing is, I believe that, you know, if I were to ask you guys, how many of you want a platform? How many of you want to see your business grow? How many of you want to be married? How many of you want to be wealthy? Many of us would raise our hands. And I think that's okay. We should desire those things. And I think there's no problem with those things. But what you have to understand is we need to count the cost of a greater responsibility. And we need to count the cost of a greater platform. Because the greater the responsibility, the greater the authority, the greater the platform, the the greater the sacrifice of serving that comes along with it. Matthew 20, 20 through 28 says this, then the mother of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus with her sons. She knelt respectfully to ask a favor. What is your request? He asked. She replied, in your kingdom, please let my two sons sit in places of honor next to you, one on your right and one on your left. 
But Jesus answered by saying to them, you don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering that I am about to drink? Oh, yes, they replied, we are able. So it's so interesting that when this woman came, and I mean, you're, we're talking about here the mother of James and John, and we know that James and John are excellent people, are qualified people, are people who have submitted themselves unto God. But what we have to understand is when they, when she asked, and she, it even says that she knelt before him to show respect. And when she asked, she said, let my son sit on the left and right side of you. And his first question to her is when, when, she, when they are asking for platform, asking for greater authority, asking for greater responsibility his first question is this are you sure because I don't think you know what you're asking for are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering that I am about to drink from so if you want more you are you're gonna have to learn to suffer you're gonna have to learn to serve you are gonna have to learn to count yourself less than others to count yourself at least as these are you really sure? Have you really counted the cost? Because the only way that you're ever going to be entrusted with something like that is if you make yourself the least of these. So they, oh, um, this is Matthew 20, 20 through 28. So now I'm on verse 23. Jesus told them, you will indeed drink from my bitter cup, but I have no right to say who will sit on my right or my left. My father has prepared those places for the ones he has chosen. When the 10 other disciples heard what James and John had asked, they were indignant. They were angry. But Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers in this world lord it lorded over their people and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, so among the, among the people of the kingdom, them, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must become your slave. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and ultimately give his life as a ransom for many. So if, if we want power and authority and platform and to be entrusted with much, my real question to you is, are you ready to serve? Because the key to your next season is serving. Before every platform, before every promotion, before every greater entrustment of um, authority and power and responsibility comes a time of humbling and of servanthood. Think about this. David, before David became the king, he had to first learn to serve sheep in a field, and then he had to serve an evil leader, Saul. Joseph, before he was given the authority he was in the palace, he had to first become a slave and had to serve in Potiphar's house. Noah, before Noah ultimately built the ark and was able to bring and establish a new generation of the righteous, he had to build the ark. And one, so, sometimes we think that serving is only serving other people, which it is, but Noah also had to serve God, had to submit to God. I'm sure people thought he was crazy, people thought he was cuckoo, but he submitted himself and built this ark piece by piece, serving and serving and giving of himself. And then ultimately we see Jesus. You know, Jesus was the ultimate servant. And the ultimate demonstration we have of service is him laying down his life. The cross was the ultimate, um, even the ultimate example of what it looks like to serve. Because Jesus came, not that he could rule, but that he could lay his life down, be a sacrifice for the sake of others. So what we see, what came from that is now, you know, not only did he remove the sting of death, not only did he remove the penalty of what should be an eternal damnation for our sins, but he also now is seated at the right hand of the Father and has all authority that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. But before David, before Joseph, before Noah, before Jesus got to this place of authority, God took them through a great process of serving. So not only do you need to serve, but you need to make sure that you're a good steward over what you already have. Matthew 25 and 23 tells us this. His master replied, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, so I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. So many of us want more, but are we stewarding what we have now? You do have some time, but do you spend it watching Scandal or Grey's Anatomy or How to Get Away with Murder? Or do you spend it serving people? Do you spend it playing? 
playing Candy Crush on your phone or do you spend it serving people? What is it that you do with your time? Because we cannot ask God for more. You know, when you get a few extra dollars, do you buy hair? Do you buy handbags? Do you buy shoes? Do you buy suits? Oh, do you buy chicken? Do you buy snacks? What do you buy? Or do you put that into the kingdom? Are you faithful to tithe? Are you faithful to give? You can't ask God for more if you're not currently faithful over what you already have. Now, I think one of the biggest reasons that people have a problem serving is they have this, what about me, attitude. So here's what Hebrews 6.10 says. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown for his name in ministering to the needs of the saints, God's people, as you do. So God will not forget about you. John 12, 26, if anyone serves me, he must continually to faithfully follow me without hesitation, holding steadfastly to me, conforming to my example in living, which means to give up your entire life for the sake of others, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. And wherever I am in heaven's glory, there you will be also. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. Matthew 23, 11, but the greatest among you will be your servant. Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For the measure by which you use, it will be measured to you. So if you're not willing to give of your time, don't ask God to take you off your 9 to 5 and let you be an entrepreneur. Because if you won't give your time, then why do you need more time? If you don't already serve with the time you have, don't ask God to make you a pastor or a preacher or anything because you won't even serve with the small time you have. You know, if you, if you won't be a good student, steward over the money you already have and sow into the church and sow into those around you who need. Don't ask God to make you wealthy because you're not a good steward over what you have. And by the measure you give, so you will receive. So if you're mad about what you're receiving right now, what are you really giving? Because it says that you will be given unto you in the measure you give. So if you have an issue with what you're receiving right now, maybe you're not giving enough. So if you want to see advancement and if you want to make it through this process and you want to see the fullness of what God has for you, the key to your next season is serving. That's the key. If you refuse to undergo the process or your season of serving, you will never grow. You will never go. You will never advance. If you don't give of what you already have, you'll never be given more. So that's today's Periscope. I'm sure some of you did not like to hearing that the key to your next season was serving because I know some people want to hear that it's dancing around, jumping, shouting, rubbing elbows with the right person, and it's not. If you, there is no, in the kingdom, there is no way to skip. There is no way to go around. There is no shortcut. God doesn't ask for some. He wants it all. He says that you must lay down your life. He said to the point to where you might die. So if that's what God is requiring of us, we can't skip it, can't go around it. That it is what it is. So you can sit there and be mad about it and refuse to serve but then don't get mad when your life is stagnated and you're not going anywhere that is simply the laws of the kingdom the laws of you know sowing and reaping the law i mean that's the example that jesus set so don't ask for the authority power or wealth that jesus had if you weren't willing to give what he gave which was everything so the key to your next season is serving so i hope y'all don't hate me after that but it's the truth and i love you guys all too much to lie to you so that is today's Friday scope. So I encourage you to serve, serve, serve. And guess what? You can never outserve or outgive God. So the more you give, the more he'll give. The more you serve, the more he'll serve you. The more you take care of his people, the more he'll take care of you. So it's amazing that we serve a God that we cannot outserve and we cannot outgive. So challenge God. Give and then say, give more than you've ever given and say, okay, God, I gave more than I ever gave. Now it's your turn to give me more than you've ever given me. And that's how it works. It's okay to put God in the remembrance of his word. So yeah, I'm not very good at sugarcoating. So that's it. That's what I have to share with you guys today. Um, I love you all too much to lie to you because you all are my hashtag scope family. And the Bible tells us that we will be held accountable for what we tell to the sheep. And I will not be someone who lies. So that's it. So serve, serve, serve. And you will advance and make it through this process. So I have some really exciting news for me. I don't know if you'll be excited, but I'm excited. <laughs> I will be in Mexico all next week. I fly out to Mexico tomorrow at 9, 10 a.m. So I'm not exactly sure what my periscopes are going to look like next week. So if I'm not on Monday or not on for a few days, don't think I died. But I am headed to Mexico. I'm not very good at resting and I'm not very good at taking a break. I'm a workaholic, so I'm hoping that I will be able to make myself take a break next week and step away. But like I said, I really do love and enjoy um, preaching and teaching on the Word of God. So I may jump on a few times next week to show you guys some Mexico, Woo, show you guys the beach. 
um, and do a few scopes. So yeah, but have a great weekend. Please be praying for my travels. If you want to see all about my Mexico trip, make sure you follow me on Facebook, on my personal Facebook, Monica Vandeny. Get in plugged or get in touch and get plugged in with the wise community. Uh, join me at wisdomisthenewblack.com. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Wisdom is the New Black. I love you guys so much. Um, if you're looking for some resources, go to my website, wisdomisthenewblack.com. Click on the tab, 21 Day Detox. Purchase that for 10 bucks, and you can renew, renew your mind in 21 days. So, great thing to do. Um, I love you all, and I will see you guys probably sometime next week because I know better than to think I'll be able to stay off Periscope all week. i got to at least show you guys some Mexico. So... Thank you for praying for my safe travels. I love you guys, and I pray today blessed you. So I will talk to you soon, but probably the next time I talk to you will be in Mexico. Ooh, 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 ooh. So, yes, I believe in traveling and taking care of yourself. So I am celebrating 25 in Mexico. Have a blessed Friday. I love you guys, and I will see you soon.